welcome to the engine markets training session meanwhile others are joining in uh, we will start with our topic for today so i hope my voice is audible to everyone and my screen is visible and uh, you know for, so the topic for today is rolling analysis on mutual fund comparisons and also individual mutual fund analytics so we will look towards both of the comparisons of the mutual funds within rolling analysis and also we will look for individual mutual fund analysis and you know explore how you can use rolling analysis to take effective decisions and then we will head over to the q and a so if you have any questions you can either write it on the chat box or you can you know ask verbally and we will address them so i hope my screen is visible uh, and i will start with the session uh, right away so just a second so um, i hope the screen is visible to everyone and uh, if not please let me know on the chat box so you know i can address them and uh, as you know i've loaded the engine markets terminal and uh, to load any rolling analysis uh, you can directly head towards the compare section so have, we have this section where you can you know add mutual funds to the compare uh, you know tab so you know to go ahead with this is the fifth tab we have which is called as compare and you can add funds in the in the system funds stocks and even customize security in the compare section and even the portfolios so let's say we want to add couple of funds so we can add funds like these like just by typing in one by one this is one process you could do second way to add funds is to directly add the entire group so let's say i want to add all the mid cap funds in the compare section i can easily add that and you can see all the 28 mid cap funds are added into the system it saves the time uh, and it saves uh, you know uh, uh, the analysis time when you are taking a look towards one single category and then analyzing them you can also sort in the funds with a couple of you know uh, main list we have this return columns relative column and the holdings column for the funds added into the system so we are going to directly head over to the rolling analysis to go ahead with rolling analysis all we need to do is just click on this rolling button so you know whenever we go ahead with this you can click on it and now you can start comparing one single category funds into the rolling analysis and we are going to discuss this in details that what are the types of columns we have and uh, what other you know uh, uh, types of statistic we have when we are taking a look towards rolling analysis in one single tab so uh, if uh, anybody if you can't hear my voice and can't see my screen please let me know in the chat box so here you know what you can see here is that uh, just a second i'll just um, so here what you can see is in the rolling analysis there are uh, funds which we have added uh, through the direct add sebi categories right so here you can see uh, we have a rolling window which is called as one year so it's a working period in a year right and within working period in a year what you can do is uh, you can actually change this rolling window either from 260 to 520 so whatever rolling window you want to keep you can keep so as of now we are keeping this one year window and we have the start date of 2014 which considers the minimum common period so the minimum common period being uh, so whenever you take a look towards the main list right so when you go back and when you see the youngest fund right so that is the youngest funds age is considered as a minimum common period and that rolling analysis actually takes it into the consideration right so within that when you go to the rolling analysis back again just a second yeah so you will see these funds uh, you know uh, which are uh, you know running the rolling analysis in front of you and here uh, you know what you can do is you can even change the start date so let's say we are taking into consideration a start date of 2015 right february 2015 from 2015 till 2022 you can do that and once you do that then we have the methodology of annualized and absolute so here you can change the methodology as well so i will show you the first annualized and then we will make it you know absolute and annualized for the simple returns and the point to point statistic and here we have the point to point return so which is just a point to point uh, return sets for a 260 day period right so within this when we run this rolling analysis it just specifically means that 
uh, you know, when you have a start date of 2015 till 24th November 2022, every single data point denotes the previous 260 days returns. So when you are looking towards point to point, every single data point. So if we hover on this access mid cap 29, uh, you know, February, February 26th, 2019, which shows 3.25 denotes the previous 260 days return, right? So when you average these all return sets from 2015 till 2022, what is the average rolling return? So this is the average rolling return given for all the funds from these date data point to this date. Right. And you can even sort this average and see which fund is actually backtested the highest average rolling return. So that's what the average actually denotes. So whenever you take a look towards this uh, within, you know, point to point and simple returns, both denote the similar thing that they're denoting the average rolling return. Right. And similarly here, this volatility denotes that all these return sets, which are daily calculated what is the volatility of that rolling returns, right? So the higher the volatility, if you see for PGM, it is one of the highest volatile mid cap fund. The higher the volatility, the more, uh, you know, uh, volatile the fund is in the, in the sense of rolling analysis. And here you can also take a look towards the high and low. So high and low specifically means that if you take a consideration of the highest point, highest return set for a 260 day period from 2015 till 2022. So which fund would have given the highest, right? In the last, um, you know, couple of, uh, uh, in the last, uh, you know, uh, from 2015 till 2022. So the highest point is basically by PGM India Midcap, uh, you know, opportunities fund. And for the lowest, the lowest point uh, within this entire data sets, which you see is given here. So you can sort the lowest point, which is by quant Midcap fund. So this, uh, you know, entire statistic for the rolling return, you can easily see the average, the volatility, the high and the low for all, all particular set of funds, which are added to one category, right? Now, the, now coming to the range, range is, uh, you know, one parameter, which will show you the uncertainty of the fund. So uncertain, uncertainty being that the higher the range is, the more uncertain is the fund. It also, you know, correlates with the volatility, but it actually means the absolute difference between the highest return set and the lowest return set backtested by a fund for a 260 day period within 2015 till 2022, right? So now, you know, we have this positive percentage as well. So positive percentage is a very useful, you know, uh, parameter, which because it helps you to understand that how many, how many percentage of the rolling period, all these data points were in positive for a 260 day period. So 260 days specifically denotes one working, uh, you know, working period in a year. Now you can change this rolling window if you want, but here, when you see this positive percentage for a one year period from this 2015 till 2022, you can easily sort in and you can see which fund has the highest positive percentage. So frequency of that fund coming into positive. You can actually simulate this positive percentage just by here in the rolling return distribution. Just, you know, all you need to do is just keep this as zero. So in the distribution, I will show you how to take a look towards positive percentage. You just need to, you know, input zero and you can input this as a maxima as a thousand percent or any particular set of a percent which can be achieved. So here, you can easily see the positive percentage uh, in the system and you can see that axis uh, just a second. Yeah, so you can easily see the highest, you know, positive percentages by axis mid cap, right? So uh, that's basically it for, uh, you know, the rolling return uh, analysis for multiple sets of fund in a point to point statistic. Now we have other statistics as well. So we are gonna, you know, uh, talk about other statistics like simple returns. Uh, there is another one which is called as volatility and return upon volatility. So let's go ahead with a simple return one. So simple return is another statistic which is used to actually compare funds based on the simple return analysis. So, you know, the difference between the point to point and simple return is fairly simple. Uh, you know, the uh, basically simple return does not have the compounding effect. It takes into consideration the sum of the daily returns for every single period. So if you're taking 260 day period, 
any data point like for example this data point for 2019 it just denotes the sum of the daily return for the previous 260 days daily returns right so here uh, you know the compounding effect is not there and hence you can easily compare the fund without the compounding effects and you can easily see the average the volatility the highs and the lows with the range and positive percentage now let's let's change uh, the rolling window for simple returns and let's make a rolling window for 520 now 520 is a two year period so when we change that uh, you know rolling window from 260 to 520 we will see the change in the average volatility highs and lows and we can also change this methodology from annualized to absolute now, this depends upon you, which methodology you would like to use. I'm showing you the absolute uh, rolling window here for 2520, which is a two year period. And here you can easily sort in and see which one is actually having the highest average. And you can also check out which one, which fund is actually having the highest positive percentage. So in this period of 2015 till 2022, the highest positive percentage uh, for the mid cap funds you can see is by Axis, DSP and Tata, right? which is 99.08% uh, of the entire fund is in positive, which is basically more than 0% for a 520 day period, right? And here, what you can actually do is you can even, uh, you know, change the window to 780 to simulate for a three year period. So let's say 780, 260 multiplied by three. When you run this up, you can easily see, uh, you know, the rolling returns statistics for a three year period. Now, in this case, when you see that, you can see how many of the funds are in positive. So there are two, basically two funds, which has, you know, the highest positive percentage. And here you can also check the highest average for that particular set of a fund. So this helps you in effectively taking decisions that if uh, you want fund, which is lesser volatile, then you can, you know, just, uh, you know, sort in based on the rolling volatility and see the volatility of the rolling returns on the basis of simple returns. And you can even download these data sets in an Excel format. All you need to do is just click on this Excel button and it, it gets downloaded, right? So all these data sets, which is average, volatility, high, low range, and the voltage, it's, is actually given here in the system. So I hope my screen is visible. I've, I've, I'm just showing the Excel based report, uh, which is generated through just by clicking on it. And it shows the 780 days rolling returns, right? Now here we have a couple of more statistics, which we are going to discuss. Another statistic here is that, uh, you know, when I've shown you that you can also make it absolute, you can also keep it annualized for any particular set of a period. So if you keep it 780 as a three year period, you can annualize that average return and all those data sets for any particular set of a period. So even if I go for another set of a rolling window, let's say 65, right? So 65, if I divide, uh, you know, it's kind of like a quarter. If I divide 260 by four, you would get 65. And once you run this up, you would, uh, you know, easily uh, see the average return sets for the 65, uh, you know, days ruling window. Now this is annualized. You can absolute it up. You can uh, get it in an absolute format and you will get the data sets on a quarter basis, which is running daily. So these all, all the rolling returns which we calculate are on the basis of daily returns, which gives us more accurate average and also a, a best way to consider what kind of, you know, uh, frequency of the fund we are uh, having on the basis of positive percentage, right? Now let's head back to the rolling return distribution here so that I will show you around with the rolling return distribution that how, how you can use rolling return distribution in, uh, you know, uh, taking some, uh, consideration of what kind of fund fits the criteria of a prospective clients. So let's say we have these funds for a one year period. We have this start date and end date. And these are the, you know, distribution intervals we have given. So basically whatever given here is a return interval, right? So for an example, you can change the return interval if you want, and you can easily keep it as per needed. So let's say we are taking 10% to 25%, right? So within 10 to 25%, which of the fund are actually having the highest frequency. So 10% is the return interval, 10 to 25% return interval for a one year period between 2015 till 2022. You can easily see uh, which of the funds are actually having the highest 
uh, you know, frequency between those return intervals. So one of them is access, and you can also recognize which is another one is a DSP mid cap fund, and then SBI Magnum. So uh, that's pretty much it. Whenever you're looking towards, uh, you know, the re rolling return distribution, whenever you change this rolling window, the distribution will also change based based on the days you take into consideration. For an example. Let's say I take it as an example of 1300 days, which is five years. And if I run it, then you can see it has changed to 1300 day rolling return distribution. Whereas you can also see, you know, what are the return intervals between which, which the funds are actually backtesting in a frequency, right? So that's basically it for the simple returns whenever you're considering rolling return distribution. And you can also download this distribution in an Excel format. So to do that, just you need to click on it and the distribution gets downloaded with the specific interval, whichever you have chosen or whichever, you know, uh, you have chosen in the interval sets here and that gets, you know, added into the system, right? So that's basically it for the rolling analysis on the basis of return. And here we have uh, two other sets of, you know, so this is the Excel based report, which I was showing you uh, for the rolling return distribution, which you can actually generate uh, just by clicking on that button, right? So that's basically it for the rolling returns. And here in the statistic, you can also go towards risk. Now risk is pretty, uh, you know, uh, you can also run in standard deviation of particular set of a rolling window. To run that, all you need to do is change the statistic uh, of uh, this uh, to, to the volatility. Just a second, I'll just add in a couple of sets of funds here. Just uh, Yeah. So when you, when you go back into the rolling returns, you can actually change uh, the volatility set, right? And then you can, uh, you know, change the rolling window. So let's say we are running a standard deviation, rolling volatility for a 260 day period. We default it up for 260. And here, what you can see is the average rolling standard deviation, which is rolling volatility in the system. So the higher the average, you can see that these are the funds which are more volatile, right? And here we also have another parameter called volatility. Now this is actually the volatility of that volatility. So it's a second level standard deviation. It just specifically means that if you're having a, you know, a fund which is having a, a good average or a, a lesser standard deviation, is it having a very high volatility? It can, it can be possible that a fund with, an good, uh, with a smaller average uh, standard deviation can have a very high role uh, volatility sense so here you can see that you know what are the funds which are you know having a more volatile volatility in the system right so this gives us an idea that whenever you take a look towards these funds right there is a time where the volatility shot up pretty high so in this time when you whenever you see this time frame there's this time frame where pgim and other mid cap funds were having a pretty low volatility but within the time, within a couple of, you know, period, you can see the volatility shot up pretty high in 2020. So that specifically is an event of a, you know, crisis. And you can easily see there was another, you know, event here in 2015, 2016, where the volatility shot up again. So you can easily see that the funds do get volatile and do, you know, uh, have lesser volatility. So what is the highest volatility the fund has given for a one year period? Right. So you can see the highest is by Motilal, Oswal, Ipru, PGIM and Adilvi. So these are all riskier ones. Whereas what are the lowest ones? So that's Franklin, Kotak, SBI and, uh, you know, Axis. So here you can easily see the highest volatility achieved by the fund and the lowest volatility. The range is similar thing. The concept is similar. Just it applies to the volatility that how high the range is and the positive percentage. So positive percentage doesn't apply to the volatility set. But it definitely, uh, the range gives us an idea that, you know, what kind of uh, volatile nature we would, uh, you know, uh, see for any particular set of a fund. So PGM is actually one of the uncertain fund in this, in this particular set of a list, right? So that's basically what the volatility shows. And then we also have another great statistic, which is called as return upon wall, right? So return upon wall, what you can do is you can just click on this return upon wall, right? And uh, within return upon wall is basically what it does is it actually calculates the ratio of the return 
and the risk, which is the volatility for 260 days period. Every single day for 260 days period, what is the ratio upon return and the volatility given in the system? Right now, in this case, I've just got a you know a chat box that what is the volatility in this case? I'll just explain through return upon wall here that you can see that the ratio changes. Sometimes funds have a very good return upon wall. A higher return upon wall indicates that the fund is giving better return sets for a one year period than the risk, than the under, you know, underlying risk. So the higher indicates that and the lower indicates the funds are not actually you know, giving that return set for a one year period when uh, their volatility is uh, still high, right? So which fund has actually given the highest average? that you can check. So here you can see that on the basis of the return upon volatility, the highest average is achieved by these top five funds, right? And what is this volatility then? This volatility just denotes the volatility of these ratios, how these ratios are changing for the time frame from the last 2014 till 2022, right? Even for the volatility, it just uh, you know denotes that how the volatility is changing for a one year time frame, and is it too volatile if the volatility is too volatile in the sense, right? So here you can actually, uh, you know, take a look towards the average and you can easily see that, you know, if you're taking too much risk, are you getting that return sets or not? So for these, you know, bottom four funds, you're taking a, you know, a lot of risk, but you might not get a good average set of a return due to the fact that they are also very risky and uncertain, right? Even for this, yes, Kotak is also one of the riskier fund, but you can easily see the average is high. So the return set is, you know, achieved here. So you can easily see the average, uh, the volatility, the highest return upon wall achieved by any fund is actually the Kotak and the lowest is actually by IPRU mid cap funds. So this entire statistic applies to all those, uh, you know, parameters we have taken a look towards, right? And you can run this and you can actually come up with a conclusion that what are the funds, even if they are risky, are they achieving good set of an average return if the ratios are high? So the, if the average is high, what is the probability of having a good average? That denotes the positive percentage. So even if I'm having a good average, yes, the probability of having a good positive average for Kotak is actually high. Right. So this, you know, denotes that whatever fund you choose for rolling analysis and whatever statistic you choose, right, you can take a look towards the average of those entire window within, you, you know, within the daily return sets for a 260 day period. And you can come up with a conclusion of the funds which should be used uh, for your uh, further analysis. So that's basically it for the rolling uh, analysis for comparisons of the fund. We also have an individual fund analytics, which shows, uh, you know, any particular fund. So let's say we uh, run in any particular fund like SBI small cap, right? So you can load in fund from here and you can easily run the rolling analysis just by clicking on this button. So once you go ahead and click it, you can see the three windows we have given. So I will repeat again, this 260 is a one working period in a year, right? So this 520 is considered as two years and 780 is considered as three years. So you can change this, you know, uh, ruling uh, window. So let's say you want to make it 1300, you can do that. And you can also make this as 780. So currently what we are running right now is a one year, three year and a five year period, right? So that you can easily do. And if you want to make it default, you know, defaulted by our system, which is one year, two year and three year, that, uh, that can also be doable. Right. So I will just show you around what this specifically means. We have this start date of 2016 and all it denotes is that any data point is the sum of the previous 260 days daily return. So basically 30.29 is the sum of the previous 260 days daily returns and all these data points. So sometimes you might lose money if you had, you know, if you had been unlucky. Right. So here you can actually average this out and you can see that the, for an absolute basis, which is given here. A one year average return is 20.32, a two year is 37.14 and a three year is 48.02, right? And you can even see the volatility, how it is, you know, increased for a two year period and then decreased again. So volatility is basically the rolling volatility, which we have, you know, taken into consideration of these, uh, this particular fund, right? 
and here you can analyze this so that you can easily understand that if i go for a you know three different period what is one is a one year period two year period and a three year period is my rolling average increasing and yes you can see the rolling average actually is decreasing and the volatility as as you can see also the volatility is decreasing so uh, the fund gets safer or you can say the volatility decreases the more you increase the rolling window right and you can also see the high is also decreased whereas the low is also decreased so your tendency of having a negative return decreases as well so that's the reason you can actually simulate it for a longer period you can go for let's say you know 1300 and here i will just type in 780 and once i run this you can see for a 1300 period the low is actually 14.64% so that's basically you know how you can uh, simulate any particular set of a, a fund for a rolling uh, analysis and come up with a conclusion for a three different intervals here right and here we have the return ranges so this return ranges is basically the rolling return distribution of the analytics so it's similarly what it does is you can change the window here so 260 780 and 1300 which we have taken into consideration and what you can do is you can actually uh, type in your own interval let's say 20 to 30 right and 10 to 30 that also can be taken into consideration and we can easily simulate that what are the frequency between those particular interval so between 10 to uh, 20% the, this particular set of a fund is actually having 16% frequency whereas between 20 to 30% it's having 18% frequency and that's uh, you know that's how you can actually take into consideration all the return ranges and this is this is where the you know the bar chart shows for a 260 day period you can change a, change it for 780 and even for 1300 to see what is the frequency here you can easily see between 18 to 20 annualized 31% of the entire fund is actually having the you know frequency between this two particular set of return interval right and that's 1300 so basically it's a five year period right and here you can also see the volatility so the volatility uh, you know i'm go i'm just going to explain it again because i've just got a question in the chat box so what is this volatility right so let's let's simulate this we have this 260 days rolling window right every data point shows the standard deviation uh, for a 260 day period so every any data point you you know uh, go ahead to choose is a 260 days period standard deviation so what is the average of this all data point is given here which is 15.57 right now if i want to if i want to know that how volatile is this data sets all these you know 260 days uh, standard deviation is it volatile right then this is where it shows the volatility so it just shows the second degree volatility of the volatility analysis to show if the volatility actually decreases for a longer time period or not so you can easily see the volatility is decreasing for a longer time period and you can simulate that right and here you can see the high and the low of the volatility uh, which you can actually uh, uh, check it out for any particular set of a fund so highest is the highest point achieved uh, uh, volatility achieved for a 260 day period and lowest is the lowest point in the you know volatility rolling volatility uh, when we are considering any particular set of a fund right now this particular tab which i'm showing you uh, right now you can actually simulate that for a portfolio as well so to run a portfolio all you need to do is just click on this portfolio section right any portfolio will work out and the similar you know it it actually shows the identical rolling analysis on a portfolio basis that if you're going ahead with a portfolio for a one year two year and a three year period how would the rolling average volatility highs and lows would be when we are you know considering a portfolio and considering the rolling analysis on an individual portfolio so that's basically it for the rolling analysis uh, you can compare uh, funds through rolling analysis you can even add in stocks so i'm just going to repeat it uh, if if i remove this all and if i just want to analyze stocks all i need to do is just you know type in the stocks like reliance right and you can add as many stock as you want and i have a list of stocks which i i have saved you can easily add those stocks and analyze them so that's you know uh, that's basically uh, it when you are adding all these stocks you can run the rolling analysis on them and come up with the same statistic 
same uh, you know uh, statistic given here for return upon wall simple return and even the point to point return between the two periods for a 260 day period so you can see for a stock that infi is actually having a highest return upon wall if you're considering a one year uh, investment between the period of 2017 till 2022 right and uh, if you are you know if you want to take this uh, chart uh, and you want to present a report all you need to do is just click on this powerpoint button so basically we also uh, you know whatever uh, rolling window and the start date you have taken into consideration will be actually be printed in that into that powerpoint so i will just show you the powerpoint and uh, that's uh, basically it so you know whenever you run this powerpoint in the last tab of the powerpoint so is my powerpoint visible to anyone so i hope the powerpoint is visible now and here you can see in the last tab we have this rolling return which is actually printed so this uh, you know this works out for any particular security added into the compare list all you need to do is set your uh, you know a 260 day or 70 day or 520 day rolling window set your dates uh, which is the start and the end date and you will see all these uh, return sets added into the system and one more important thing here is that when we are actually changing the statistic and generating the powerpoint that particular statistic will actually be printed into the powerpoint so that's basically it uh, how it works out i've completed the session so we can go ahead uh, with the q and a if you have any questions then we can uh, you know take it forward hello Hello. Am I audible? Hello. How to prepare in PowerPoint? Yeah. So there's a question called how to prepare in PowerPoint, sir. What you can do is you can especially click on this button uh, to export in a PowerPoint uh, function, and uh, you know the PowerPoint gets generated. So uh, all I need to do was to click. first you need to add the funds or the securities in the compare tab and once you have added them then the powerpoint gets generated so powerpoint something like this i'll just show you one second so this powerpoint includes all the comparisons of you know with the category of the you know uh, securities you have added and the you know the data sets like kagger and standard deviation with risk and return and also you know you can see the rolling returns which have added in the system right so uh, the powerpoint is pretty useful if you are adding the funds as well which will also show you uh, the positional overlap and the correlation in the system so sure. uh, i have uh, another question uh, that for a 1300 day period five year rolling returns the annualized point to point and simple av average can be significantly different right and uh, so which one is better one to use yes so point to point and simple return as a as a parameters can actually show you different results sets the difference between them is that point to point is actually uh, considering the start point of the rolling window and the end point of 260th day rolling window it's kind of like uh, a cagr which rolls in from the period of 2017 till 2022 and it has a compounding effect and that's the reason the average is different it it looks different than the simple returns whereas for simple returns what we do is when we calculate it it only sums up the daily return for a 260 day period every single day for a 260 day period you just sum up sum up all the daily returns and you get a particular set of an average so the difference is that the compounding effect does affect the average and even uh, the volatility of the you know funds or the stock so if i add in a fund from here like the mid cap funds you can easily see the difference 
between the simple returns and the you know point to point returns the just a second i'll just show you around So uh, between the simple returns and the point to point returns, you can see the average is right now 14.35 uh, for LNT mid cap. But if I just change it to point to point, the average will have a certain set, for, uh, set of a difference due to the fact that it includes the compounding effect. So you can see there is, you know, a, you know, uh, a difference in average due to the compounding effect. Now this depends which one would you would like to use. Simple return is the one which we suggest because it doesn't have compounding effect and it gets you a proper set of comparisons between the funds which are added into the system. Right. So there's another question uh, which you had is why is the rolling volatility figure on the individual fund page different from the one in the compare tool? Ma'am, uh, the only difference would, would have been that the fund analytics has a different start date. So let's say we open another set of a fund here, like let's say UTI emit a fund, right? So we are having a different start date like 2011. And when you see the rolling analysis for that particular set of a period, uh, that would have been the, you know, uh, the case that's you're, uh, you know, having a discrepancy between the compare tool because the compare tool right now is showing 2007. Whereas if I run in UTI uh, mid cap fund and see the rolling analysis, it will be completely different, right? So uh, ensure ma'am that you can actually, you know, change it to the same date, date set and you will definitely get the identical set of an average. Okay. okay, there's another question, which is the correct rolling vol volatility to use? Uh, Ma'am, both of them are actually identical. Uh, all you need to do is just ensure the same date sets uh, within the volatility and you will get the identical one. So both of them are actually correct. There's a question. Uh, volatility parameters are little confusing. Please explain with one fund with what it means and how to interpret it. Okay. So um, here uh, in the volatility, uh, when whenever you run a fund, right? So uh, what uh, what we do here is that for a volatility, any data point I choose, let's say uh, we have a start date of 2011 for UTI mid cap fund, right? Now here, what you can do is whenever you run in the fund, any data point, we will start with one date, which is a 09 April 2012. So, so from the start of 2011, which is our start date, uh, 11th April 2011, we have the first standard deviation, which is 15.83. Now the standard deviation is pretty dynamic. It's not static. You can see the standard deviation is changing once you change the date. So it rolls in every single day till today. And you will see the change in the standard deviation from the start of 2011 till this current date, right? Now here, what I want to know is that what is an average standard deviation of UTI mid cap fund? So all these data points are actually one year standard deviation, right? So average standard deviation is 16.11. If I make an, you know, average of all these data points, which I'm, you know, getting one by one for every single date, then I will get an average, which is 16.11. Now I would like to know that what is the volatility of this standard deviation? How volatile is the standard deviation for a one year period? Because sometimes the standard deviation is too high. Sometimes the standard deviation of the portfolio is too low, right? So I would just want, uh, you know, to know what is the volatility of it. So I will, what I will do is I will just calculate the standard deviation of this particular set of, uh, you know, uh, data sets, right? Now, what it indicates here is that if I'm going for a one year period, two year period and the three year period, is the standard deviation changing or not? Is the volatility of that, you know, standard deviation changing or not? And you can easily see, actually it is, uh, you know, fairly increasing it's becoming more volatile. The volatility is becoming more volatile, right? So uh, the main uh, purpose here is to get an idea of an, uh, you know, second level analysis of any particular set of a volatility in the system. Now, if I just consider 520, now this is the standard deviation of a two year period. And then this is the standard deviation of a three year period, right? So you can easily see that, uh, you know, for a, on an average, the standard deviation is actually increasing. Uh, if you go for a one year period. Now the standard deviation can also be considered, you know, good for a fund. 
right so uh, only thing is that uh, it does not show only the downside it also shows the upside so the interpretation here is just to take a look that how volatile the funds fund or a portfolio becomes in certain set of a crisis for an example you are considering a two year investment on a fund right and you just want to know that okay uh, you know what are the uh, volatility in the last uh, 10 years and you can see this is how the volatility has been within like there's a crisis in 2016 you saw the demonetization the standard deviation shot up right and then again there was a you know uh, again there was a scenario where standard deviation shot pretty high so this is you know the covid one and how much time it took you know it especially for the two year period it was pretty volatile and then it shot down again so uh, that's basically what the standard deviation shows for a one year one particular set of a fund if you're considering and if you want to compare standard deviation for a once let's say for a 260 uh, and all the funds added into the system then all you need to do is just add those funds into the compare list right and run the volatility analysis the statistic which was given here so uh, whichever fund let me just remove one of them and whenever you see this rolling volatility you can easily see that on an average if i uh, go ahead and i want to know which fund is actually more volatile on an average from 20, 2007 to 2022 then the highest volatile fund is i pro mid cap in this list right so uh, i can even add in more funds to know that what are the lower volatile funds in that list for a category or even for different sets of categories and then i can take a look towards so this average which i am achieving is it volatile or not is the standard deviation of the standard deviation so that's basically it what it means there's another question what does the range indicates okay uh, so range uh, basically is the absolute difference between the high and low so when I, when I, when i'm considering 2007 till 2022 right so uh, within 2007 and 2022 there is one point for a one year period that the fund has achieved the highest return so in this case if i considering lnt midcap fund it had an highest return of 105.29 and you can easily guess it out where right so here you also have a fund you know uh, lnt midcap has a lowest point which is negative 91.61 right so now i just want to know uh, you know if the high and the low what is the difference absolute difference between the high and low and that is the range the higher the range is the more uncertain is the fund because you can see there is definitely i pro is having a very good high but also having a very high low right so range is high and i am having more uncertainty my average can be 12% but i am very uncertain i can i could you know lose money right so it basically gives you an idea that uh, a simulation of one year period if done on all these funds what would be the funds which funds would be the most uncertain funds based on the range so if i add in another fund let's say a lower volatile fund in the mid caps right then you can easily see uh, you know what are the ranges between those funds so you can see the range here is pretty low against the i pro mid cap fund right so it gives an idea for uh, you know for considering that the uncertainty of the nature of a fund there was another question 260 days daily return is a good matrix or we need to go to 520 days yes so the uh, the main uh, purpose here is to simulate for as many days as possible because here what you can do is you can go for 260 you can see which funds are having a good average and uh, you can also go for 520 right and then uh, see that on the basis of that parameters which you have taken into consideration are these funds also having good average in a 520 uh, range so which is a two year period right you might see funds outperforming each other for a longer period and if you're looking for a longer period then you go ahead and you know you can also go for 780 and see for a three year period uh, on which uh, which one is having the highest average right
there's another question what is an average uh, so basically average is just an average of all the data points of 780 day period from 2011 till 2022 so every data point you see uh, you know i would just want to know what is the average of all these data points i might you know i i can just click on this date that that is 20th february 2020 which shows 16.95 return but that does not show me that okay what if i invest any point of the time between 2011 to 2022, what would be my average return? And that basically shows the average. So you, we, we just average this all data points and we get an, you know, this particular set of numbers, which helps you to determine that on an average, which funds ha are having tendency to go towards highest returns. Sure, sir. We we have taken that uh, uh, your uh, suggestion into consideration. We will definitely take a look into it, and uh, we will definitely uh, you know take it forward. Are there any other questions? Yeah, we have another questions. Any new features upcoming? Uh, yes, sir. We are having some new developments soon enough and we will be uh, releasing those developments soon. We will be actually having a session which will show about the new updates which are upcoming and also the ones which we are working on currently. So, you know, uh, possibly in the next or upcoming sessions, you will get an update. And if you want to know the updates, all you need to do is just click on these updates. We are active on Twitter. And we are also actively posting our insights. So this, these insights are auto-generated by our product team. Uh, you can actively use these insights, uh, you know, for uh, any purpose. And here, you know, for to just activate those insights, all you do is just go here. It they are you know frequently updated every week. Five to six insights are updated, and uh, we you can also you know toggle in through the filtration given here, and take a look towards insights. So yes, uh, we will come up with uh, the new updates soon enough. Sure, uh, uh, sir, there's a question. Can we create set of funds as portfolio based on our parameters or filters? Yes, you can create, sir. You know, all you need to do is uh, there's a section called fund section, which is pretty useful because you can actually go ahead into the fund section and there is a apply filters which we have given. And uh, here you can filter the categories. Let's say I'm just considering small, mid, large, and ELSS as, as my, you know, major funds in my model portfolio. I can easily filter them out with the main selection. Uh, we can also apply the filters like 1500 minimum age as eight years, you know, uh, sharps ratio as 0 0.40 and apply that out. And now you will see only these funds uh, fits the criteria. So you can apply those filters and then save these funds into the compare section as a list. So let's say I'm applying a filter of 20 negative 25 for a value at risk. You will see only these fund fits my criteria. Now, this is a small set of a list which I have, but once I add them to the compare, now these are my, you know, uh, go-to funds for this particular set of filtration. And you can see in the compare list, which can be saved as one of the, you know, conservative or any, any particular list, which you can save into the system. So to save any list on the basis of filtration you have given, you can save it and, you know, given here with the name, you can recognize those particular set of a list, right? Once it is saved, you can onload a my list. And I've, I'm just showing an example here that we have actually added many particular set of a strategy, which actually helps you to recognize the list. So let's say a moderate one, a risky one. So this is what we have saved to show you that you can also save your own particular set of a list on the basis of filtration. So if I'm using this, uh, you know, risky, uh, uh, strategy, I know that, you know, we have taken into consideration some high standard deviation funds, 
or some high volatile volatile funds in our system right are there any other questions there are no other questions so we can uh, wrap this session up for today okay thank you so much everyone if uh, any questions which are un unanswered uh, we will definitely be in touch with you uh, let us know through the support uh, at the rate engine research.com so i'm just typing in the mail uh, support at the rate engine research.com uh, and you can easily you know uh, get in uh, easily mail it to us uh, with your queries or the questions uh, we are active on the mail uh, list as well and if you have any queries related to you know some set of uh, you know parameters uh, like for an example we also have an faq given here so faq is pretty useful to get a generalized view on some parameters which we have made articles on so let's say we are taking a look towards rolling analysis uh, which we had a session today so you can easily see uh, you know for what is the rolling return methodology right and once i run in you can see the methodology given here so um, what methodology do we have you know how do we have added all these things are given here all you need to do is just click on this faqs and you will have a small uh, article wh whichever questions you have in and if you have any more suggestions uh, that th that are not there as an article we will happily add more article to you know make this a very comprehensive guide for you to take a look towards another great one uh, which we have is the video tab so you just need to head over to the videos tab we have youtube channel you can even search engine markets and all the you know all the queries even related to rolling returns we already had some sessions before so you can uh, check it out here in the system and many many videos are added actively we will be adding this seminar as well so any queries anything please let us know in the next session uh, for um, so we are wrapping up for today Thank you so much everyone have a nice weekend